Hi, this is Carrie from Cookbook Divas, and today I wanted to show you this incredibly heavy Bordeaux Kitchen Cookbook. It is by Tania Teshki. I should have researched how to say her name. Tania? Tania. Tanya. Tanya. Anyway, it's the Bordeaux Kitchen, an immersion into French food and wine inspired by ancestral traditions. Now, the reason I particularly got this cookbook, because given cookbook shelf space limitations and budgetary limitations, I don't just buy every cookbook I go enjoy, but I happen to run a wine blog or two. If you're really curious, you can drop me a note in the comments and I'll tell you which ones they are so you can check them out. I'm not a wine reviewer, more of a travel blog blogger. So the wines that I'm writing about in the wineries are usually French style, Bordeaux or Rhone style. So I thought this is great. I can pair the wonderful local wines that I'm drinking with French recipes. That said, I'm a vegetarian. And of course, a lot of this delicious French food and the food in this book is meat. So I just skip over that part. And it's okay because my boyfriend, who I do cook meat for, does not like fancy food. So I don't have to handle anything weird and gross. But this is an incredible resource. I've been very impressed with it. I can't say I've used it for much more than the appetizers. Let's check out what's in here. This is a hard book to hold open. I need a cookbook stand. The chapters are Introducing the Bordeaux Kitchen. How I came to discover the ancestral lifestyle by eating like the French. The French art and tradition of food and wine. That was an important chapter for me to read. The three secrets to French cooking. Okay. Farmed fats, fresh ingredients, and cast iron pots. I, I'm a believer. Yeah. The butchery basics. I skipped that part. And then we get to the recipes which is a large section of the book, 483 pages-ish. Uh, beef, fish and seafood, lamb, offal and fats. I skipped a lot of this book, people, let's be honest. Pork, poultry, eggs and rabbit, steaks and sauces, veal. Okay, finally, page 431. It was safe for me to look. Vegetables <laughs> and desserts. <sighs> we'll, we'll go visit that part of the book soon. Uh, Chapter 7, Know Your French Wines, How to Taste Them, and How to Pair Them with Food. Super important. Chapter 8, I love books like this that are not just cookbooks. Living with Intention, Family Food Organization, and Meal Planning. Love it! The appendixes include the author's roots, an epilogue, a note on the photography, acknowledgments, cooking glossary, references for the reading, and notes, and a bibliography. This is a serious book. I can't even imagine how many years it took to write. I'm going to show you some peeks at the, at the various, the, okay, this is heavy. Beautiful food photography, stunning. Uh, the recipes have a nice little introduction to each one. I can't even look at this new picture. <laughs> and pictures from France, lots of meat. Okay, just gorgeous. Um, very mm, typical cookbook, but each one has a wine pairing tip with it as well as the ingredients in the instructions. And the wine pairing tip is not just, ah, use our whatever. They're really, really go on and on. It's very helpful. I'm going to skip ahead to our vegetables. A Nisois vinaigrette, onion marmalade, old fashioned mustard. I actually have made my own mustard before. It's worth it. Orange plum sauce, shallot and vinegar dip for oysters, or in my case, french fries and tofu. <clears throat> veal stock, stuffed veal cutlets. There's a lot of meat in this book, people. I'm rethinking this now. Will I keep this forever, given that I can only make things from the last one eighth of the book? Kabocha squash, mashed Jerusalem artichokes. That, I didn't know French people cooked with those. Now here, oven baked beet chips. I've never tried making those. Oven baked french fries, yum. Oven baked zucchini, sweet potatoes. Okay, this is getting, this is getting more along my line. Of course they have a recipe for a potato gratin, of course. I'm gonna try to pop into the dessert section before I end this video, because that's very important. Oh, okay. Walnuts in milk. That is simple and comforting looking. I wouldn't have thought to make that. Okay. Vanilla burned cream. Creme brulee. Okay. Sweet and savory crepes. Yum. 
CD crackers. I'm not making my own crackers. Not when I have a Whole Foods close to my house. I'm sorry. Let's be honest. Oh, syrup and gelatin, pears and butter and cinnamon. So this is a very versatile book. Now that I've revisited all the meat sections, I may not keep this forever. It takes up a lot of room, but it is gorgeous and definitely easy to follow recipes because I am not a gourmet cook. I'm not an advanced cook. I'm, I'm in the middle. I cook dinner at home three or four nights a week and I throw parties one or two nights a week and then I go to restaurants. So check it out. I would take a peek at it at your local library before investing the money to buy it on Amazon or Barnes & Noble or your favorite brick and mortar local bookstore. But if you're really into food and wine and French cooking, this is probably the number one book you'd want to throw on your shelf, especially if you eat meat. And it came out, I think last year, 2018. So thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed this cookbook look through.